very good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, Mr. V. Govindrajan, co-founder and chief executive of uh, Perfras uh, Software Solutions Private Limited and co-chair of the FICI FinTech Committee. Uh, Mr. Shrikant Rajgopalan, chief executive officer, Perfras Account Aggregation Services and co-chair FICI Task Force and Privacy and Data Security. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, welcome uh, to this Friday, when we bring you yet another feature of our Expert View series. This is the fifth uh, session in this series. Uh, today's uh, session will cover some of the basics of account aggregation, what it can and cannot do, and how organizations can use the ecosystem to its fullest. The account aggregator, this is AA network, that provides data aggregation and sharing services based on the explicit consent of the data owners was unveiled by the Ministry of Finance uh, early last month in September, just about a month ago. The network can be a game changer for financial data sharing and can significantly change the investing and credit landscape in the country. Some of the largest banks in India have already announced their participation in the same. However, to make this initiative a complete success, participation by all banks, all lending entities, including the large number of fintech entities that have come up in the country in a timely manner will be absolutely critical. We're delighted to have with us this evening, Mr. V. R. Govindrajan, co-founder and chief executive officer, Perfios Software Solutions Private Limited, and co-chair of the FICI FinTech Committee. Mr. Srikant Rajagopalan, Chief Executive Officer, Perfuros Account Aggregation Services and Co-Chair, FICI Task Force and Privacy and Data Security. Two uh, leaders from the industry who have been at the forefront of the account aggregation ecosystem in India. I extend a very warm welcome to both of them. I'd also like to welcome each of the participants that has joined us today. And just to share with you that the format of the, system, uh, the session is a fireside chat with our guest speakers. And it will be moderated by Mr. K.C. Ayappa, head GTM at Perfuse Account Aggregation Services. With these words, I would hand over to Mr. Ayappa now. And I once again thank all of you for joining. Do keep safe and do keep well and follow the COVID protocols. Thank you, Dilip. Today on the FICI Expert View series, we talk about the account aggregation ecosystem and how it's all about creating a trusted data ecosystem around consumers and service providers. Welcome Srikanth and Govi. My first question is to you Srikanth. Give us a quick overview of what account aggregation means and what consumers can expect in the months to come. Thanks Ayapa. Yeah, as the name suggests, an account aggregator is a service offered to the end user in technical terms called the data principle, somebody who has lots of data lying in different places. Account aggregators are licensed by the Reserve Bank of India. And what we do is to make it easy for people like you, the end user, to discover and link all your accounts, whether, whether they may be in a bank or in, in two or three other banks, and get them all together in one place. And once you've done that, and once it becomes easy for you to look at all your financial data in one place, you may then choose to share it with, let's say, a lender or a portfolio manager or an insurance company um, to apply for their financial products. Uh, what an account aggregator essentially does is to make it very easy for you to store all your data in one place in digital format and share it with a lender or some other uh, institution in a completely digital format without having to hunt through your emails for a statement upload a PDF somewhere, it just removes all the hard work from you, right? Um, so right now the stage where we are is uh, there are about eight banks and NBFCs who are live on the ecosystem uh, starting September 2nd of 2021. Uh, we've seen a lot of interested activity from consumers. Over 20,000 individual bank accounts have been linked and over 45,000 consent requests, as they're called, have been raised. So it's been a very, very encouraging start. Some of the largest banks and NBFCs are already part of the ecosystem. Um, as you can imagine, it's very early days. So we're working very closely with these uh, institutions 
to innovate and build use cases on behalf of the consumer. So what does this all mean for the end consumer? How does he benefit? So let's say that you have um, a bank account with SBI and with uh, HDFC Bank, and you're interested in a loan offer that ICICI Bank gave you, right? Uh, so the way it would work is you would go to an ICICI Bank and say that I have these accounts with SBI and HDFC Bank, for example. You would link them through a specific account aggregator app, and then say, here is my data with these banks. Fetch it, and I'm giving you permission to use it and decrypt it, and then maybe offer, offer me something, a personal loan or a vehicle loan, and do it in a matter of seconds rather than a few minutes or hours it takes today. Uh, so in all this, what is important to remember is that the control of who gets your data, for what reason, and from where is entirely in your hands. And you can then determine how long that consent remains valid in terms of three months, six months, one week, whatever that use case stands for. Essentially, the key message you want to take away is the account aggregator empowers the data principle, you, to keep control over where your data goes and for what reason. Sounds exciting. Govi, my next question is to you. What role does the FIU play in this ecosystem? Say, financial information user or an FIU uh, plays, I think, the most critical role in increasing the adoption of the entire ecosystem. Because after all, an end user like you and me, we don't go and in most of the times create consents or link accounts or discover accounts. We go to an FIU, like as Srikant said, maybe I'll go to an SSA bank and ask for a lending product or go to your portfolio manager and ask for a PFM product, right? So, so when I'm doing that, I want a seamless experience as an end user where these accounts are discovered or linked or uh, made part of my uh, journey of this lending product or a PFM product, right? So to that extent, the FAU has to ensure that the AA ecosystem integration happens smooth smoothly and the end user experience is seamless so that AA becomes more like under the hood rather than being an explicit product that is thrown open to an end user. So to that extent, the FIU has to ensure that in all their existing user journeys, AA is embedded beautifully and seamlessly, as well as in any of the new use cases that Srikant talked about or will talk about, uh, again, the AA becomes like under the hood. Similar to when UPI became part of the payment ecosystem five years back, it's not like all these payment service providers went and created a new architecture or created a new user experience. Along with net banking and credit card, that just become one more radio button. Similarly here, AA will become one more way of acquiring the data, but all the other user journey should remain the same so that the end user does not feel that it's a completely different experience. So to that extent, FIU becomes very critical in order to increase that option. So how does AA work for analytics providers? Opportunity or threat? So it's a great question. Uh, in fact, this is one of the uh, misconceptions because as the CEO of Perfuse, I get asked this question very often, whether you will go out of business. And this I have been answering for the last six years, uh, ever since uh, people have started talking about AA or it was in the drawing boards. Actually, what happens today? I mean, why is even AA required? Let's go back one step. Why is even AA required? Today, before the advent of AA, what was happening was people were asked to, Srikant touched upon some of this, people were asked to provide information. It is not like people were not using the information. Even today, people are using the information. But there is so much of pain in getting that information. If you have to go and apply for a loan, have to like either go and get this data from a bank site or get a printout, give it to my relationship manager, go to your branch. So there is so much of friction in acquiring data. There are companies that are doing it in their own proprietary way, like what Perfuse does, right? But in each one of this, there is a friction in acquiring data. So as a result, what has happened is people have taken the easy way out. Instead of going digital, they said, fine, you need this data, please take it. As a result, 85% or slightly more is all paper-based today, even today. In spite of all the digital push and the COVID kind of uh, accelerating some of this digital transformation, bulk of it is still paper-based and only about 13 to 15% overall is digital when it comes to lending, right? So what AA does to this, again, as Srikant touched upon it, is that it gives a fillip to the whole digital movement. It makes it easy for an end user like you and me to share the data in a digital form, all the way from discovering, linking, to sharing it with an FIU, it makes it so much more simpler. So what it means then is this 14, 15% can suddenly transform to a 60, 70% or a 4X, 5X growth can happen immediately 
just by adoption of something like an AI ecosystem. Now, this whole digital transformation, as all of us know, is great for everyone. It's great for the end users, it's great for the stakeholders like a bank, or the entire ecosystem, it is fantastic, right? So, so what we feel uh, as, a, as a result of this, as an analytics company or a technology service provider, we feel this gives us an opportunity to kind of immediately build a lot of the value add to our customers, right? Leveraging this digital data. Because the moment the data is available to us, plenty of things can be done, whether it is alternate credit models in the case of uh, lending or the entire personal finance management can be done in a far better way. So there are tons of new use cases that are possible the moment this is rolled out. That is one aspect. The other aspect why it is so exciting for a company like us is the authenticity of data. So, so more than just the availability of data, which is available in one form or the other today, what AA does is it gets the data directly from the source, which means the authenticity of the data is guaranteed. I don't need to go and second guess the data anymore. Is there a fraudulent element there? or the statements tampered? So I don't need to worry about this because this is directly coming from the source. So both in terms of availability of data, adoption of data to digital form, and the authenticity of the data, this is a fantastic development for a company like us. Thanks, Govi. Shrikant, you mentioned that AAs cannot read data and that they are built on common specifications. It all sounds like a commoditized business. How does an AA make money? And how do you differentiate between one AA and another? Great question, Ayapa. And uh, before I s specifically answer the question, it's important to remember how the thinking evolved in creating a consent manager called AA, right? Um, let's remind ourselves that the term account aggregator is a slightly misleading. What an AA does at its core is manage consent, right? The thinking behind this is to have a regulated standards-based way to ensure privacy for a consumer. And the only way that you can ensure privacy is by guaranteeing consent, right? So if you start with that frame of mind, that a consent manager has to do only the job prescribed, which is making sure that you as a data principal know who is asking for the data, for what reason, and for how long. Those are the three fundamentals then it becomes easy for you as a data principal to trust somebody. Um, instead of, for example, giving a paper statement to some sales guy who comes home, and then not even uh, being sure about how many times it's being photocopied, right? So before we get into business model and differentiation, let's remind ourselves that the reason an AA exists is to create a trusted ecosystem for a data principal to say that I have so much data, it's all over the place, but hey, I'm not getting the best benefit out of it. How do I collect all this data? How do I make sure that I am asked before my data is fetched or used? And that is a fundamental reason we exist. Now, if you go one level uh, further, the RBI or the Reserve Bank of India's regulations are very specific that the AA cannot decrypt the data. And that is for a reason. Because what you don't want happening is in this whole ecosystem, is for huge you know, data monopolies to get created and single points of risk and failure, right? So by design, the RBI has said that, yes, you're only a consent manager. You will be, act on behalf of the data principle in figuring out where the data is, getting it in a standardized format, and with the customer's consent, sharing it with whoever she wants to. Now, at this stage, the um, business model is purely transactional. Uh, what we have decided as a collective of the ecosystem is that we will make money by charging the FIU who requests the data on a per data pool or you know, combination of what kind of data, how frequently, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a purely a transaction-based revenue model. Uh, at least in the short term, we're very clear that the data principle should not be paying to access her own data. It doesn't make sense, right? Um, so under the current regulations, the business model is purely transactional. Um, and as ecosystems build and as more and more innovation happens in this, we show that we will find more uh, monetization opportunities. To your question on differentiation, um, you know, let's start by acknowledging that you're not going to wake up in the morning and say, I need to provide consent to a particular AA. For that matter, you're not even going to wake up in the morning and say, I need to use my Citibank credit card. No. You're seeing a sale happening on Amazon. 
you want to buy a 50 inch TV, along the way you want to see how, how best can I afford it, what is the most affordable way of uh, letting me buy that TV. Now in that journey, if there are let us say an ICICI bank and an HDFC bank who have an offer, right, as, as typically happens in every sale event, how do I make a particular AA or account aggregator the easiest and the most um, comfortable way of sharing my data? So the answer to differentiation lies in working closely with the lenders, with the FIUs, in actually developing some of these use cases. Uh, like Govi very articulately mentioned that the key to adoption is in the use case. And that use case lies with the FIU. And an account aggregator who works very well understands the journey and inserts AA as seamlessly as possible. That's where differentiation will happen. So you're right. An account aggregator works in standard specifications. It's 1.1.3 as specified by the RBI. Everybody follows the same specifications. As an end user, if you simply want to discover and link your accounts, um, there's hardly any difference between one and the other. But the moment you want to do more with an AA, with your data, that's when the differentiation comes in. What I'm hearing is that the success of the AA will be dependent on how FIUs develop use cases for AA. Shrikant, what innovative use cases can AA enable that we don't see today? Plenty, plenty. Um, currently, we're working on some very, very innovative use cases for what we call flow-based lending for SMEs, uh, where you don't have to necessarily guarantee or you know, collateralize uh, uh, things like your stock statements and stuff like that. So there's a lot you can enable and open up for an SME from a formal lender just based on their cash flows. Uh, there are very innovative consumer products being worked upon. Um, one of our lenders actually asked the question, why does a credit card have to be a 30-day and a 21-day cycle at a 14% APR? Why can't we have very, very targeted offers to very different customer segments? You'll see a lot of, um, uh, in, the, in the world of lending, use cases which are at a specific time. So for example, if you look at anybody's cash flow, uh, it's never uniform through the month, right? You probably don't need 60 days of credit for you know, a big amount if you're an SME. You probably need um, 20 days of uh, working capital credit between the time you pay your supplier and your customer pays you. So a lot of this needs very granular information. Again, to be clear, an account aggregator is not opening new data sources. The data was already there. It was just lying in silos. It was extremely difficult to fetch it. And Govi talked about 85% paper-based. Um, by the time the data comes in into a lender's this thing, already there's so much of cost and friction there. Um, so, the, so the limitation with what we see today in terms of products is actually with the friction and data coming in. And it's, a, it's, it's almost a thumb rule in the consumer business or in you know, any of these businesses. The more you remove friction from any process, whether it is in payments that we've seen before or now with data sharing, the more the adoption will grow. Um, so absolutely, you'll see some very, very cool use cases in the SME space, in the consumer space, uh, and hopefully soon. Sounds like a self-reinforcing virtuous flywheel. The more AA succeeds, the more lenders can innovate for their customers, which in turn should drive adoption for AA. Got it. Shrikant, you mentioned that we have started with eight banks and are steadily expanding. What support do you need from the government, regulators, and industry? Great question. Uh, see, from the industry, it's very straightforward. In the existing realm of banks and RBI entities, we just need more large institutions to get on board very quickly, right? There's always been this question from the uh, banks, for example, should I wait, should I join now? Uh, our message to them is very simple. The earlier you join, the more you're able to shape the uh, evolution of the ecosystem, and that just works for everybody. We've seen it in UPI, we've seen it much earlier in the credit bureaus. So people who join early get the maximum advantage. So if there is one request from the industry, large banks, large pools of data, join fast. From a regulator perspective, um, we've seen some tremendous work happening from the RBI. Um, in fact, I haven't seen anywhere else in the world a regulator has actually specified technical specifications the way RBI has done. Nowhere in the world have we seen this happen. Um, so that's been a positive from the RBI. What we wish would happen uh, sometime soon is other financial regulators 
like the SEBI, the IRDA, the PFRDA, they show similar directions to their, their regulated uh, entities. Uh, because what we're seeing now is banking data is great. It opens up a lot, uh, but by itself it's not enough, right? So we need those sectoral regulators to come up with specific directives for their entities to participate in a very time-bound manner. Finally, from a policy perspective, and this is important, um, uh, the PDP or the Personal Data Protection Bill, as it is called, uh, is pending in Parliament. Uh, we're hoping that it becomes a law soon uh, for two very simple reasons. One, it's, it's critical for a consumer to believe that everything that they're seeing from an FIU or an FIP is actually backed by a law and it is trusted. And if something goes wrong, I have somebody to complain to. Right? That is most crucial. Because whenever you're giving something new to a consumer, uh, you have to overcome these fears and these, um, how shall I say, doubts that, hey, what is this thing? Where did this come from? Is there a law behind it? And secondly, from a market participants or financial institutions perspective, they also need that backup to say that this is actually a law. It is, um, you know, the, it has a legal framework. Therefore, I can design my policies and compliances around it. So three things. One, large institutions join quickly. More regulators issue directions for their entities. And the PDP becomes law in, in quick time. Just to add to what uh, Srikant said, um, maybe I'll elaborate on some of the things Srikant you said. Another area where uh, we need a nudge uh, or a push from either the government and the ministries and the regulators is this whole notion of uh, adding more and more types of data. Uh, to some extent, Srikant touched upon the regulators, but let me kind of dwell on this. He talked about uh, flow-based lending, so we need a GST data. So today, strictly speaking, the master direction document does not talk about it. So the earlier GST comes on fold, that uh, definitely helps, or CBDT data. Or if you look at utilities data, that can solve a lot of the KYC-related uh, problems. Or moving forward, if you can get access to, let's say, telco data or health data. Or, I mean, the kind of use cases that are possible with the different types of data sources that are available. One, it is real time. Two, it is all digital. It is authenticated. The kind of use cases you can build are phenomenal, right? So it is important that if the regulators slash uh, government can help in uh, pushing more and more of these data sources into this uh, consent manager slash AA framework, uh, that will also help the ecosystem. Govi and Srikant, thank you very much for taking the time for this. It was a very enlightening conversation. Thank, thank you for, for having, having us. us. Thank, thank you, Vicky. Thank you. Back to you, Dilip. That was a really very interesting session. In fact, uh, I got to learn about a lot of new concepts and new ideas that are being driven in the financial sector in India. And thank you, gentlemen, for this very interesting session. We definitely see this ecosystem expanding, going ahead. We believe that a strong push from the RBI for time-bound real-world production launch by all banks would go a long way in implementing and operationalizing a faster and orderly launch of the account aggregation framework, which is indeed the need of the hour. It will benefit all sections of industry and services, and in including even the agriculture sector. Vicky has been consistently espousing this, and I'm aware of the great work being done in this area by the Fiki Fentech Committee and the Secretariat with Jyoti and Anshuman, uh, and our engagement with the government on, on, on the account aggregation framework. Perfios, along with other players, is providing great foundation to the entire ecosystem. Uh, Fiki wishes you the very best for the times ahead. And thank you, uh, both uh, Mr. Govind Rajan and uh, Mr. Shrikant Rajgopalan for uh, being here with us uh, this evening and Mr. Ayappa uh, for you know, moderating the session as uh, efficiently as it actually was conducted today. Uh, again, for all uh, members, uh, we will be back again next week with yet another interesting session for our members do reserve this slot on the Friday afternoon for uh, your own increasing knowledge and getting abreast of what's happening in the business and ecosystem in the country. Thank you, keep well and keep safe.